if only but forget all that I know despite all your doubting there's a beautiful truth in you you already are all that you hope to be your beautiful truth brings clear losing daylight so let's do this quickly hi hello welcome welcome to a writing vlog my name is megan if you are new here i'm a writer i'm currently studying to be a library tech and my schedule looks a little different this week. This is just gonna be a writing vlog. As per usual, I'm gonna talk books, I'm gonna talk about what I get up to every single day when it comes to putting words on a page, and so let's start, let's start with today. Today, Monday, I woke up very early. I'm currently on a placement with my program, which basically means that for three weeks I'm placed at a library and I work kind of like a full-time job and my placement takes place in different areas in the city. Some are really, really far away. So if you watched my last writing vlog, you will have seen that I had a really, really intense schedule, very long days, a pretty big commute. I left the house super early. This week's gonna be a little bit lighter. I have three days at a closer campus and then two days at the far campus. So it's gonna look different. I'm gonna be writing in a lot of different areas and I'm also, maybe going to be writing different things, I don't know. If you don't know, I am currently working on two projects. One is an adult fantasy series that is set in a fantastical world that's kind of similar to the world of World War One. My cat is bringing his toy and that's just the noise that you hear in the background is he's bringing me his toy. It's a gift and I will accept it. It's got romance, it's got war. I love it, I love it so much. It's my heart on the page and I finished the first book in that series and I'm currently working on the second book in that series and I'm currently calling that The Faded. The first book is called The Folk, second book is The Faded. I hope you're following me. The other adult fantasy that I'm working on, I'm calling my dragon project. It's got dragons, it's got warfare, it's also got romance, and I actually haven't written that one for a while. Last week I was really really focused on The Faded. I'm just feeling so much inspiration with that story and I'm just following it. I'm not fighting it, I'm just embracing it, and I'm just gonna focus on it for kind of as long as I want. Which actually leads me to a question that I have for all of you that are watching this. How do you track ideas when you are on the go? I get ideas all the time when I'm walking, I get ideas before I fall asleep. Like I just get so many ideas when I'm not in front of the computer, obviously. And what I've been doing is I've been, I email them to myself. And I've done that for years now, is I will think of something and I'll just email it, which has been great. But I'm getting so many ideas, which is also fantastic, but it's crowding my inbox a little bit and I don't really know what to do. Here's the culprit. Here's the gifter of the toys. His name is Roger. Hi, buddy. Yeah, I just have so many ideas, which is fantastic, but it's crowding my inbox and I am such an out of sight, out of mind individual. Like my ideas have to be there in order for me to remember them. So I don't really know what to do. Like, do I just get a notebook? Do I write it in a notebook? Do I flip through that notebook before each writing session? I don't know. Tell me what you do. I know that like a writer's notebook is a really big thing that a lot of people have, a lot of writers have, but I don't. Maybe I need to get one. Let's talk about today. I wrote around 500 words and I think it was because I was at a new campus and it was kind of like a new schedule and I had so many ideas that I sent myself over the weekend and I was so excited to sit down and write and <laughs> it was a struggle. I was, I don't know what it is, I was very tired. I only managed to get like 500 words and they were definitely a struggle and in those moments when that happens really what I do is I just focus on like rereading the scene that I'd previously written and adding to it and that's fine because I still got around 500 words out and I'm very very happy about that. So we'll see where the rest of the week takes us with writing. I also have a lot of research that I want to do so let's talk about that. So I am currently reading 
The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. I've read this book previously and I remember really liking it, but I don't remember a whole lot about it. It is set in World War II France and it follows two sisters. One of the sisters gets caught up in the resistance movement in France and that's kind of why I'm rereading it is because I'm doing a lot of research on the various resistance movements that happened throughout Europe in World War II. And not focusing on any particular country because please bear with me i'm not just reading a fiction book for research i just want to clarify that before i continue on with this book and so i am not focusing on any particular country and that means that i have a whole lot of books to show you which i'm not going to show you right now but i have a whole stack of books that i bought over the weekend at a used bookstore and they are all about various resistance movements during the Second World War, except for one, which I'll get to in one second. And I'm gonna get through them and I'm really excited. I'll show you them all at the end of the video, so I'm not just like showing you a bunch of books up front. So stick around if you wanna see a nonfiction research book haul. And maybe I'll talk a little bit about like how I do research. Who knows, that might be interesting. But the book that I really wanna show you up front is called to End All Wars. And this is a book that is about protests and um, conscientious objectors in World War One. It is always so hard for me to say that word. And World War One is what my book is inspired by. It's um, a history that I have been studying for a really, really long time. I took a bunch of classes that had to do with Canadian military history in university and I've written a bunch of papers on World War One in both Russian and German history and I really really like it. Um, I don't know why, it's just something I've always been drawn to. And so when I saw this book in the bookstore I was really excited because this is the type of book the type of non-fiction book that I actually thought that I would write one day and so I'm really really excited to see what information is in this. So that's it, that's all. I'm losing daylight and I, I really just wanted to say hey this was a long introduction I'm sure but I'm losing daylight so I'm gonna wrap it up here and just say get cozy. Let's get into this week, let's see what happens, let's write some words, let's be creative, let's do some reading and let's just try to have a good time. I think that's that's really the key. Okay, get cozy, let's get into it. Heard it from a friend, she was in our bed, should have known better. Said it was the truth, she came on to you, yeah, but you let her. Knocked me over ten feet forward. Never knew I could sleep alone good, I've never been better. You're probably out there somewhere missing me. Wish I had an ounce of sympathy. Yeah, I tell my friends that I wish you well, but the truth is, honey, that I hope it hurts like hell. Like hell. When you see me leaving here with someone else, well, the truth is, honey, that I hope it hurts like hell. Like hell. Remember when you tried putting up a fight bet you feel stupid try to make a scene didn't change a thing damn it you blew it and you're probably out there somewhere missing me wish i had an ounce of sympathy yeah i tell my friends that i wish you well but the truth is honey that i hope it hurts like hell the end of a long week and I thought you seemed withdrawn mm -hmm. well the truth always comes out now yours has through someone else's mouth and right now I can't move on you're telling yourself it's depressing 
protect me so you hid away a crucial part of me and i can't let this go even though you said you're sorry because you lied to me about me let's just pretend like i have it together oh i'm not even in the frame this is great how are you she asks having just spoken to you. A little bit of a writing update. I'm still writing the one project and much like every creative I know and have listened to and spoken to and I am overthinking it. I am overthinking the fact that I have been planning to work on two projects at the same time and for the past two weeks all I can do is work on this one project and I'm leaning into it for now. I'm not forcing myself to switch gears because it's going so well. The project is going so well. I'm loving writing the second book in the series. It's so much fun and I just feel like that's where the inspiration is for me right now. I have an inbox full of, an, of ideas, of scenes that I want to write, and I think I'm 22,000 words into the manuscript. It's going to be a really, really big beast. It's going to be probably around 200,000 words because that's what the first one was, and I want to keep it a very similar length. So, you know, I'm not like super into it, but I'm just feeling so creatively inspired, and so I don't want to switch gears. But let me know down below if you think that I should force myself to switch gears. Like, is there... Because the thing that I'm overthinking right now is what if the well dries up? What if the well dries up and then I've exhausted all of the creativity and then when I switch to the other project, I've got nothing left for it? Or what if it starts getting really hard to write the second book and then I get really discouraged and, <laughs> and then I start writing my other project, the dragon project, and it's really, really fun. Will I abandon the second book? I don't know. I'm overthinking it, clearly. I'm very much overthinking it. So let me know what you think down below. Should I just like keep going? I feel like I should just keep going. Like as long as the creative energy is there, why, why fight it? There's a cat here. She does not like to be as held as much as the other guy, so she's gonna fight me, but she's here. She's present. In terms of how like the nitty gritty of writing is going, one thing that I'm realizing writing the second book is I really, really, really need to create like a reference Bible for the first book. Um, because I feel like I'm getting caught up on tiny details, little details, like a character who barely exists in the first book is quite prominent in the second book. And I forgot what eye color they have, you know, things like that, where I'm like, I just need to do like a control find in the document in the first book, but it's just kind of annoying. So what I'm thinking is every single time I stumble upon a little tidbit of information like that, I'm just going to create a Word document and go from there every single time. Every single time. I feel like I must do these verbal updates on the hour because every single time I sit down to do a verbal update, my cuckoo's clock goes off. So I don't really know what the format will be. Like I'm thinking it'll just be a Word document. Let me know again. There's so many things that I need help. <laughs> so many things that you could potentially answer to in this video. I'm very excited to read some of the comments, but I don't know if I should do like a Word doc. I'm thinking a Word doc with an index. Let me know. Let me know. Maybe a Google Doc. I'm open to anything. I'm not really open to Scrivener. I don't really love Scrivener that much. It's fine. It is what it is, but I just don't love it. Like it gets the job done, but I just, I feel like I, it, I, I don't use it as, as well as I could. So really it's a me problem. Okay. So that's it. That's the update. Uh, going well, overthinking it. Not sure if I should switch gears. Not sure if I should force myself to have a little bit more of that balance between the two projects that I was aiming for. Do I lean into the creativity? Will the creativity leave me? Who knows? Who's to say? But I guess we can only find out, right? Okay, <laughs> let's, let's keep going. Let's keep going with this week. hear me but it's the last day it's my last day and I'm just waiting for my bus and it's such a beautiful morning and I had a really good night's sleep so that's why I'm so happy right now but a little bit of a writing update yesterday was rough I woke up with a splitting headache and I still managed to go in as early as I normally have been 
but I only wrote like 139 words I think like it was definitely under 150 but that's just the way it goes and some days I just really really struggle I think I stopped like mid-sentence <laughs> um, and it was terrible like I just I don't think it's usable but I do have an idea for the scene so we'll see how today goes but I'm not putting any pressure on myself because it's the last day um, I look so tired, but I slept really well. <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited. very tired looking Megan I'm sure but it is Saturday and as promised I'm gonna wrap up this video with a little chitty chat on research and how I research hold on I'm putting on my slippers because not only is it Saturday morning and I've spent all morning editing this video it's also a super rainy cold Saturday which is literally my favorite I'm I feel like it's a gift because all I want to do today is just be super cozy <laughs> drink coffee and lay on my couch and after I'm done filming this and editing this that's exactly what I'm gonna do because what a week as you saw what a week what what a three week what a three weeks what a three weeks it was a whirlwind and I'm just so so excited to work in libraries uh, especially academic libraries it, this was just so special and I wish I could talk about it more but I'm going to be job searching you know I don't want to get too specific for a lot of reasons but I will say they're very happy to be a future library tech I'm so excited for that and that leads into what I want to talk about which is researching so before I get into the books I'm going to talk a little, very briefly about how I research I could do a whole video on this if you want me to I'm happy to but to be honest it's pretty simple I integrate my research into my writing meaning I don't stop for research unless there's a very specific question that I have that I know can be answered very easily. An example of that was when I was writing my first book, I couldn't remember what they called the medical devices that they used in World War One and World War Two to administer morphine. Um, I think they're called Surettes? I don't know how to pronounce it, but I couldn't remember what they were called because they're not quite needles. They are like pouches with needles attached to them and they just pierce the skin, administer some morphine and good to go. And so something like that, I'll stop and I'll be like, wait, what was that called? Let me look into that. Or like, how much morphine would you give X? That kind of, those kinds of questions I'll answer before I continue because they're kind of important for the scene. However, if I can't find the answer right away, I will just let it be continue writing. So biggest thing is I don't stop my writing for research. I don't do a bunch of research before because I don't like the productive procrastination that it makes me do because I don't want to obviously delay my writing and I feel like I could just use research as an excuse not to continue writing or not even to start because I'll tell myself I don't know anything about it before I continue onwards. So I don't stop my writing. I do an integrated research method. I will say that I tend to write things that I am knowledgeable about. As I've said earlier, I'm deeply, deeply fascinated by the history of World War One and have been for a very, very long time. I actually have a minor in, I have two minors, which I never talk about. I have a minor in history and a minor in political science because all of the other classes that I was taking in university were pretty much dedicated to 
Canadian military history, history of war, all of that kind of thing. I just, I'm, I'm deeply fascinated by it. So I do know quite a bit about it. I was also a military journalist that specialized in talking about PTSD and veterans affairs. And so I have a background in this. And so I'm, I can speak confidently about certain things. Obviously, this is an intense history. There's a lot. And so I'm not an expert by any stretch. I would never call myself an expert. Like, if you wanted to talk specific battle tactics and things like that, wouldn't necessarily be able to do that. I'm coming at it with a level of interest that is there. And so I do think that there's some research that I don't necessarily have to do. If I wanted to write something like medieval history or something that I knew nothing about, I would probably do like one or two months of intense research. And I would give myself a deadline to finish that research to start because again, I feel like you can really use research as an excuse not to write. So if I had a deadline of I'm going to get through two months worth of intense research, or I'm going to read five books before I begin, then I would. But for me, really, the most important thing is, do I have a good plot? Do I have some good characters? The world building, the kind of filler aspect, I feel like you can you can fill in as you go. You can integrate research as you go. What really matters is your actual story. And as a future library tech, I obviously am not shy about research methodology and how I actually research and what I research. Use your library. It probably has a ton of resources for you. It's wonderful. It's there. There are so many ways to find things online. There's so many amazing websites. So I suppose uh, if you really want me to do like a how to research video, I'm happy to do that as a future library tech. More than happy. I love research methodology and searching and resources and all that jazz. I am a little bit of an information nerd, which maybe you knew, maybe you don't, but it's there. I'm really lucky right now because I'm in school. I have access to a ton of databases through my school's library. I also have a Toronto Public Library card and the Toronto Public Library has a bunch of amazing historical resources as well. So really, I just, I, I have so, so many things available to me, which is wonderful. But I will say that I also have this stack of books that I'm really excited to get into. So let me show you them. I kind of made it seem like at the beginning of this video that I was going to get through these books this week, but like obviously I didn't mean that. I'm not going to and I hope it didn't come off that way, but I am going to get through these books quite slowly one at a time. Not only does this history fascinate me, so I'm excited to read them, but what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to pull out elements that inspire me or things that I could relate to my story. I think that that's a really good way of integrating his history into fantasy. My world is not this world. It, the world, the war that I'm writing is not World War One, but it's it's very, very deeply inspired by it. So there are elements that I'll pull. And while I know some stories of the resistance fighting in World War Two and a little bit of World War One, I don't know a lot. And I think that there's going to be particular elements to each of these stories that I will be able to pull. Even something as simple as what, what was it like to live in the forest and fight a powerful nation? You know, what did that take? What, what are the stories that I could pull from that? So that's what I'm going to do with this stack of books and I'm very excited for it. So let me just briefly go through them because I don't know if anyone is interested in this kind of history or anything like that, but I really think that there are some fascinating ones in this. And I'm going to start with The Light of Days by Judy Badalion, I think is how you'd pronounce the author's last name. This is a story of women who resisted Germany during World War II, particularly Jewish women, and the various ways in which they resisted. So this is kind of in the vein of, I believe Code Girls is what it, it kind of comps itself to. It's kind of an untold history that focuses on women and their impact, and particularly Jewish women. And I think what I'm going to pull from this one is the various methods in which they resisted Germany and obviously the bravery that it took and I just think it's going to be a really really fascinating history. The next one is Disobeying Hitler by Randall Hansen. This is all about the German resistance movements that picked up post Operation Valkyrie. So if you don't know Operation Valkyrie was a failed attempt to assassinate Hitler and it came about at the very end of not the very end, but like towards the end of World War II in 1944. I think for me, the interesting thing about this, particularly with my story, is a country that knew it was losing a war 
and how its citizens reacted to that. This next one is an overview, which I'm really excited for. This is European Resistance in the Second World War by Philip Cook and Ben H. Shepard. This is edited by them. This is kind of an overview of every single country. So it actually breaks down by country. Oh my gosh, see? It's happening again. The cuckoo's clock is going off again. See, this is so weird. I don't understand. I must really just be a creature of habit. So this is really more of a textbook style overview, just the snapshot of every single country and how resistance differed country by country. And I'm definitely gonna use this because within my story, the resistance takes place in multiple locations, both within a densely populated city, but also in forests and in nature, and I will be curious to see how resistance differs. The next one I'm really excited for, this is a memoir, and it's called The Art of Resistance by Justice Rosenberg, and this is about an Eastern European Jewish man who escaped the Nazis multiple times and then eventually joined up with the French resistance and spent four years fighting with the French resistance before joining up with the Americans towards the end of World War One. And Rosenberg was is also a professor of literature and I was reading the first paragraph and it's really really well written so I think that this is going to be deeply fascinating to get a first person point of view from the resistance in World War II, particularly the French resistance movement because that was a very prolonged effort to fight against the Nazis. And last but not least, this is by a pretty famous author. Eric Larson, he wrote The Devil in the White City. He also wrote Dead Wake. He's written a lot of historical narrative nonfiction, which I think is really interesting. I haven't actually read anything from him. And this is called In the Garden of Beasts. And this is about an American ambassador who was sent to Germany with his family in 1939 and basically had to be an ambassador to the Third Reich and sat at the table with really, really horrifically evil men. And I'm really interested in that dynamic because that is a dynamic that I'm actually currently writing. So I think it will really help me to get an insight to what these moments were like and perhaps what was going on through this individual's head, I don't know, we shall see. So as you can see, I really just try to pick resources and books and articles and anything that relates to elements of my story. And I really approach storytelling in a psychological way. I'm really interested in the journey of characters and how things feel and how things could be. So while I may not take direct history, I think that I think that even if I was taking direct history, my methodology would still work. I feel like I've said methodology so much, but I feel like it would still work. And of course, I am starting with To End All Wars, and I'm very excited for that. So that's it. That's my book haul. That's my week. I think that's it. I think that's all. I am so happy that you're here. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching all the way to the end if you're still here. I appreciate you. I appreciate you so much and I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, stay creative out there. I know I sure will. Bye. <laughs>